Tonight, Victorians facing big on-the-spot fines. Beaches shut down, but not everyone stayed home, despite an alarming surge in coronavirus cases. Growing anger on the Mornington Peninsula. Locals send a message to visitors. Go away. COVID-19 shuts down one of our most famous retailers. Maya closes all stores and stands down 10,000 staff. Travellers arriving home to be escorted into forced hotel lockdown. New details live. Cruise ships in Melbourne. How we'll avoid the chaos of Sydney. And petrol under 90 cents a litre. The advice for drivers. Live from our Melbourne headquarters, this is 7 News with Mike Amore. Good evening. Victoria has had its biggest one-day surge in coronavirus cases. 111 new patients today. Police patrol beaches as the Premier warned there will be big on-the-spot fines for people caught breaking the rules. But not everyone's getting the message to stay at home. So many Victorians treated it like a normal, delightful autumn day, despite this stark warning. Beautiful day today. Uh, sadly, uh, you need to stay at home. They ignored the Premier on the beaches. They ignored him on the running tracks. They ignored him in the forests. You need to be locked down. They ignored him at Bunnings. They ignored him at the markets. There were strong messages from locals on the Mornington Peninsula. The surf coast shut its beaches to all but locals. Bayside beaches too were closed, but there were mixed messages. You can go for a walk at the beach, but you can't spend the day at the beach. Still, time after time after time, police ordered people off the beaches even as others were allowed to sunbake in groups at adjoining parks. If you can get that close to your hairdresser, why can't you be two metres away from someone on the beach? Police even used drones to patrol the beaches from on high, all a bit extreme, according to some. There's plenty of room on the beach to have social distancing, you know? And I think that's the point. All the closures came after this yesterday. Hundreds gathered in groups on the St Kilda beach, infuriating the locals. This should have never occurred yesterday, but obviously the people weren't getting the message and the government had to step in, which is what it's all about. Sometimes you look around and think, you know, are people listening? They're still um, reporting on our um, local Facebook page that people are having parties in their house. No penalties for walking on a closed beach today, but for disobeying other coronavirus restrictions, Victorian police can now issue on-the-spot fines. More than $1,600 for individuals, almost $10,000 for businesses. For offences such as failure to self-isolate after arriving back from overseas, for breaching attendance limits on weddings and funerals for owners of venues such as pubs, cinemas and gyms opening illegally. If you are putting lives at risk then you will be punished. Victoria Police are not mucking about. Victoria now has 685 cases, up 111 on yesterday, a 19% increase. These numbers today uh, are obviously the biggest increase we've seen in a single day. They are a concern. As unconcerned as so many Victorians appear, the Premier once again warned tougher restrictions are coming soon. Nick McCallum, 7 News. And in the past few minutes, we've just heard from Victoria's Chief Health Officer, who's had some strong words to say to those people who spent the day outdoors. Brett Sutton tweeted, some of the behaviour today has been really crap. It's hard to change habits and it's hard to see dangers that aren't apparent yet. But with 3,000 cases in Australia this week, we're headed to 100,000 within three weeks without change. Anger and tension is building on the Mornington Peninsula where locals are furious at the number of out-of-towners invading their beaches. They want Melbourne families to stay in the city and not spend the shutdown in their holiday homes. Locals on the Mornington Peninsula are getting straight to the point. Stay the f home. Basically, we need to get the message out. Frustrated mum of four, Karen Lonsdale, is angry the message is still not getting through. 
pretty crazy with people on the beach, a lot of holiday houses coming down with their families, lots of cars, lots of boats, lots of jet skis. She says Dramana has been flooded with city visitors doing the wrong thing. Not very good. You know, we're all trying to do the right thing here. We have an elderly population. We're trying to restrict ourselves from seeing our own family. A lot of the anger is directed at a couple who returned from an Aspen ski holiday with the virus and failed to properly self-isolate in Portsea. Maybe if we're going to close our beaches, why don't we close the peninsula off to the Melbourne people because they brought the virus down here and we've, we've got a hot spot here now. Beaches were closed late this afternoon, but it still didn't stop some people ignoring the new rules. Unfortunately, there are police who have come on the beach and are telling people to leave. Police officer there telling people to leave. He's just doing his job. The Mornington Peninsula has the second highest rate of COVID-19 cases in Victoria. Locals hope the decision to close all beaches here means visitors will stay away. If we have to close our beaches, we close our beaches. Maybe that will stop them coming down. Cassie Zervos, 7 News. More than 100,000 retail workers have now been stood down in recent days. Maya and Country Road are the latest big brands forced to close their stores. Georgia Comensoli is in Burke Street in Georgia. Maya is closing stores for at least four weeks. Mike, 10,000 workers from Maya alone will be jobless this time tomorrow. They've been stood down without any pay as the department store giant tries to weather this retail storm. David Jones has just announced they will be keeping their major stores open. But Country Road, the Cotton On Group and Witchery will all close on what is a very dark day for the retail industry. Midday inside Myers' flagship Burke Street store, there are more staff than customers. Further proof, Australia's retail sector is on life support. They are spending more on wages than they are actually receiving through their tills at the moment. Maya will close all 60 of its stores tomorrow night. 10,000 staff stood down. Everyone goes to Maya, everyone knows Maya, and if something like that happens to someone like Maya, probably worse than what people actually think it is. I think it's kind of scary if I was working for Maya right now. Maya stole Maya. Founded by Sydney Maya 120 years ago, Maya will shut its doors until at least April 27th. And as team members will not be working, they will not be paid during this period of imposed closure. Maya hopes this will only be a temporary shutdown, but experts fear COVID-19 could have a devastating long-term impact on the department store giant. Once this is all over, I think it'll be a very difficult trading period for a period onwards, and I would estimate it could be a good six to 12 months before we see some kind of normality back in the retail industry. Country Road, Cotton On and Witchery also shut up shop today. Like Maya, they'll continue to trade online, but our major supermarkets are bucking the trend. Coles is in the process of employing an extra 12,000 workers. They're coming from hospitality. They're coming from tourism, they're coming from the airlines, they're coming from high level customer service industries and they're ready to work and we're ready to make them employed again quickly. Georgia Commons solely, 7 News. We're just hours away from strict new quarantine rules, forcing returning travellers to isolate in hotel rooms for at least two weeks. Cameron Bowe is at Melbourne Airport for us tonight in camp. Passengers can expect a show of force when they land. Mike, police and the army will enforce this crackdown. It means that travellers here at the airport will board sky buses to get to their accommodation. More than a thousand travellers will enter forced quarantine from midnight. The new homecoming for Victorian travellers. Two weeks of quarantine in a hotel room. This is proportionate. It's never been done before, but it's the right thing to do, the smart thing to do. Entire hotel buildings will be set aside for the forced quarantine of thousands of Aussies returning home. Up to 26,000 rooms will be needed in Victoria. It's more or less a moral obligation and an ethical obligation to step up. It's also a much needed financial boost for the accommodation industry, an opportunity to keep staff in work. There'll be a substantial cost involved in this. Uh, but I think the benefits far, to health, the benefits to all of us far outweigh the costs. This is the firm next step after the measure to self-isolate at home didn't work. The vast majority of Australia's COVID-19 cases are from overseas travellers. 
From midnight, returning travellers will catch buses to their accommodation. They won't be able to access shared facilities, including hotel pools, during their time in lockdown. Soldiers and police will be deployed to ensure travellers don't leave quarantined buildings. We have had probably one or two instances where we've had you know, guests and residents actually not adhere to that. But as a whole, everyone's been very understanding and very respectful and responsible at the moment. Hotel operators will also be looking for public money to clean their buildings after quarantine ends. Incoming travellers will be given three hotel options to choose from. Cameron Bow, 7 News. The state government is standing firm on its decision not to allow cruise ship passengers to disembark in Melbourne. Let's bring in Blake Johnson, who's at Station Pier. And Blake, Daniel Andrews is desperate to avoid another Ruby Princess disaster. Mike, the decision to allow thousands of people off the Ruby Princess in Sydney is one of the biggest mistakes authorities have made during this coronavirus shutdown. But tonight, as two cruise ships sit docked at Station Pier next to the Spirit of Tassie, what happened in Sydney has been a very valuable lesson for our Premier. Australia's cruise ship crisis arrives on Melbourne's doorstep, but Victoria's Premier has learnt from the failings of New South Wales. No one's getting off those ships, be in no doubt. No chance they are getting off any of those ships. The Pacific Princess has 115 passengers on board. She departed Fremantle to refuel here on the way to the United States. They are here in, uh, in, in our harbour, they are here in our local community, uh, uh, in our waters, uh, to receive food and other stores if you like. The Seaborne Sojourn is also bound for the US with just two passengers on board, both unable to fly home because of medical reasons. No one's getting off. 2,700 people were allowed off the Ruby Princess in Sydney earlier this month. Almost 300 have since tested positive to COVID-19. A crew member was taken off the ship last night with symptoms and the West Australian government has an international crisis on its hands. More than 70 passengers on a German cruise ship docked in Fremantle are suspected of having COVID-19. Australia's coronavirus tally is now more than 3,500. So of that group that have come from overseas, 496 of those have come from cruise ships. Blake Johnson, 7 News. And more cruise ship passengers have finally arrived home in Sydney to confusion. Officials were unable to explain why some were allowed back into the community and not others. Yeah, sure. Sure, I'll get them, Commissioner Fuller to explain that. Others who may be considered higher risk because they've come off a cruise ship are offered accommodation. While quarantine passengers say they're symptom-free, many face additional isolation when they return to their home states. Private hospitals have warned the Prime Minister and Premiers have just 24 hours to help them stay open and pay staff or many will close. The fight comes as the new National Cabinet meets again to consider whether Australia needs an even tougher lockdown. Intensive care beds, the COVID-19 front line abroad. It's where many fear the virus will overwhelm Australian health care within weeks. No, say the government's key medical advisers, our ICUs are ready. We have doubled the capacity there and there are beds available right now with ventilators right now. Yet private hospitals claim the government is about to inadvertently shut down up to a third of all intensive care beds with elective surgery largely delayed, private hospitals say they need government support now to pay staff. Tomorrow night, the hospitals will start to close next week. It's got to be solved this weekend. National Cabinet meets tomorrow. The Prime Minister and Premiers talking again as pressure builds to order a more profound, rapid lockdown. Prime Minister Morrison is believed to have resisted pressure from Victoria and New South Wales for a deeper shutdown. He argues whatever measures we introduce, we need to be prepared to live with for at least six months. I don't think that's the case at all. A lockdown can probably be as short as four weeks. Others back the Prime Minister's caution. As soon as the lockdown is lifted, there is the risk that the virus would just start spreading again. This as the government adds to its $715 million aviation support package, today announcing $198 million for regional airlines to offset running costs. Tim Lester, 7 News. 
British Prime Minister Boris Johnson is tonight governing via video link from self-isolation after testing positive to coronavirus. The UK is expecting a surge in COVID-19 cases in the coming weeks and the forecast is dire. Boris Johnson alone to video his own coronavirus confession. I've taken a test that has come out positive, so I am working from home, I'm self-isolating. He started experiencing mild symptoms less than 24 hours before, a temperature and a cough. He stood a few metres from the Chancellor to applaud health workers. Four hours later, the result came through. The virus does not discriminate. We are all at risk. The news sent his key adviser, Dominic Cummings, running from Downing Street. Earlier this month, the British Prime Minister was in a jocular mood about the threat of the virus. I, I'm shaking hands. I was, at a, I was at a hospital the other night where I think there were, a few, there were actually a few coronavirus uh, patients and I shook hands with everybody. He last met the Queen on March 11. The palace saying Her Majesty is following all the appropriate advice with regards to her welfare but won't say whether the monarch has herself been tested. COVID-19 has now struck at the heart of the British government's response to the virus. England's chief medical officer is self-isolating with symptoms. The health secretary has also tested positive. So I'll be self-isolating here until next Thursday. Boris Johnson is isolating in his flat, which is actually above 11 Downing Street. Staff will leave food and government papers at an internal door. His pregnant partner, Carrie Simmons, moved out into self-isolation herself a few days ago. As Britain prepares for a peak in patients in the coming weeks, convention centres will be turned into field hospitals in Manchester and Birmingham. And the airport there will become a temporary mortuary with space for 12,000 bodies. 181 people have died from coronavirus in Britain in the last 24 hours, the worst day here so far. Italy has also just experienced its deadliest 24 hour period, 919 people dead in a day. They're nearly three weeks into the lockdown. The virus now taking hold in the south of the country. In France, a 16 year old girl has become that country's youngest victim. Her mother is saying she had no underlying health conditions. The Eiffel Tower was lit up to say merci to French health workers. And back here, the changes to British life continue. Trooping the colour, the annual celebration of the Queen's birthday will not go ahead in its traditional form, according to the palace. A number of options are being considered. Mike. Hugh, thank you. Now, the AFL is confident it can save all 18 clubs from going under during the coronavirus crisis. Jackie Felgate has more. Hey, Jack. Hi, Matt. Mike. Yes, we'll have the latest from league headquarters next. With a half a billion dollar life-saving loan, the next priority for Gil McLaughlin. Plus, what the AFL players' boss had to say in a direct phone call to Lee Matthews. Also, why Chris Waller has Melbourne Cup glory in his sights. And an incredible show of kindness from the Joker. All that and plenty more, Mike, coming up later in sport. See you then. Thanks, Jack. There's been a fire tragedy in Melbourne's southeast. We'll have the details next. Plus, a young girl in a hospital mercy dash after a fatal crash. Plus, in the face of a crisis, emergency workers are copping vile abuse. What's happening to petrol prices? They're dropping under 90 cents. But some are still paying too much. We investigate. Hi, I'm Ben Cousins. It's been 10 years since I've spoken publicly. Is this your last chance? I've stuffed things up. Can you tell me 100% you're not using drugs anymore? Um... The most shocking is still to come when Ben Cousins comes clean. Sunday on 7. If you're in business in Australia, right now you're facing one of your toughest challenges. It's not business as usual and it's hard to know where to turn. Business Australia can help you manage your responsibilities to your employees, look after their health and well-being, and assist with strategies to maintain and sustain your business. We've been helping Australian businesses through thick and thin for 194 years, and we're here for you now. For free advice and support, visit businessaustralia.com. The next Garvey Autumn Sale extended for one week only. Prices have fallen on quality furniture up to half price. The next Garvey Autumn Sale must end this Sunday. Before you connect to the NBN Access Network, 
It's important to check things like how many devices will be connected and how they will be used in the busy time from 7 p.m. and 11 p.m. To get started, contact your provider. protein from muscle development, Nutrigrain is one of the highest protein cereals. Focus here. Enjoy a break from your multiple repayments with a better start personal loan. Now I'm free to get back to my rhythmic gymnastics. Enjoy no interest and no repayments for the first three months with a Better Start personal loan when you consolidate debts of 20k and over. Let's. Latitude. Partners in money. Apply today. For relief from frequent heartburn, there's an alternative to prescription medicine. New Zanzol 24 Hour. Available from your pharmacist without a prescription, Zanzol 24 Hour lets you take control of heartburn and acid reflux on your own terms. By reducing stomach acid production, it provides relief from the burning sensation in the chest that occurs when stomach acid rises up into the esophagus. So take control of your heartburn. Choose Zanzol 24 Hour today. The MS Dream Home Lottery is back. And this year, how many can win a grand prize? Two can. Yes, two lucky winners will each win a $1.5 million Porter Davis home or $1.5 million in gold. Plus, two early bird draws <coughs> with your chance to win a BMW Z4 or an Audi SQ5. Plus, there are thousands of other amazing prizes to be won. Get your tickets today. <coughs> The Nick Scarley Autumn Sale, extended for one week only. Prices have fallen on quality furniture, up to half price. The Nick Scarley Autumn Sale, must end this Sunday. Everything you love about a Subaru meets the effortless efficiency of hybrid. Charge! Introducing the self-charging hybrid, the next generation of Subaru. Charge! A body has been found after a blaze ripped through a Narry Warren property. Emergency services were called to the house around 3.30 this morning. A woman was found dead inside the property. Police are investigating, but the fire is not believed to be suspicious. A woman has been killed and a young girl airlifted to hospital in a single-car smash west of Bendigo. The car hit a tree at 7.30 last night. A 10-year-old girl was airlifted to hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Police are investigating the cause of the crash. A Sydney woman has been charged with spitting on a police officer after claiming she was on her way to a virus test. Police are enraged by the attack, which was caught on camera. A vile act against those there to protect. Put this, put this, yeah? Ale, do not spit on me or you'll get put on the ground. As the corona pandemic grips the world, it's an act that's left our police shocked and repulsed. I've had conversations with police that have just, been, just broken my heart. I've spoken to police that have been abused. I've spoken to police that have been spat on. The 25-year-old arrested after an alleged high-speed pursuit. Officers say she claimed she'd been on her way to get a coronavirus test before spitting. She's been charged with assaulting police, but was set free on bail for a mental health assessment. Then this, yesterday in a doctor's surgery in southwest Sydney, the patient who told the clinic she'd had corona symptoms for four days spits on the carpet. The doctor's boss doesn't want to be identified. I felt disgusted because... Healthcare workers put their lives at risk on a daily basis. An American woman is facing terror-related charges, accused of deliberately coughing on fresh produce, claiming to have the virus. And this Amazon delivery driver is being investigated after being caught spitting on a package. Laura Banks, 7 News. The RACV says Melbourne's petrol prices have become almost impossible to predict, with coronavirus changing the normal fuel cycles. Motorists are being encouraged to take advantage of cheap prices when they see them. 
This is one price drop that had to be seen to be believed. Petrol at 89.9 cents a litre, a low years in the making. I was actually driving up there and I couldn't believe it. I said, no, nah, that can't be right, I've done a year. <laughs> and it is. <laughs> This United service station at Thomastown was a magnet for bargain hunters, keen to drive their dollars further. It's been a while since it's been so low. Certainly uh, there is cheap fuel out there, particularly in the western suburbs and northern suburbs. While people were filling their tanks, some took the time to consider hygiene at the pump. I guess it's just to take precaution. The impact of the coronavirus is being felt on our roads as the demand for oil around the world has dropped. Its price has fallen by almost 50%. The RACV says the highest price was $1.49.9. The average was $1.31. The last thing anyone wants to see is people, people trying to profiteer, people trying to take advantage of these very challenging times. A lot of people are doing it tough. In these uncertain times where change is now part of our everyday lives, predicting the petrol price cycle is next to impossible. The best advice from the RACV is to shop around. Don't panic and keep your tank topped up. Wholesale prices have dropped um, and that normally leads to lower retail prices, but the market has completely and fundamentally changed. Tom Chadwick, 7 News. We've had a warm start to the weekend and Melina Saras is here with an early look at the weather. And Mel, how's tomorrow looking? Well, Mike, it'll be humid and dry for most of the day, but showers and storms are expected to move in during the afternoon. It was pretty warm and dry out there today, though. The city dipped to 15 this morning and got to 27.5 just before 5 o'clock. Outside now, it is still 27 degrees out there and it is staying mild. It won't drop below 19 degrees all night. Temperatures were a couple of degrees above average across the suburbs today with plenty of sunshine and northerly winds. Avalon, Geelong and Torquay all made it to 30 degrees. It was 28 in Essendon and 28 at Hastings as well. But showers are on the way tomorrow afternoon. They could produce up to 10 millimetres in the city and there is also the chance of severe thunderstorms. I'll be back with those details soon, Mike. See you then. Thanks, Mel. Ahead, Melbourne homes still selling in the crisis. Going, going, gone. But there's a big difference. See how it's working. Plus, a Navy ship becomes LA's largest hospital as American cases surge. Anger as local council elections continue despite the health emergency. How the Wiggles are helping children learn to wash their hands. I would love to see Queensland represented by someone who can actually win. In eight days, do these Queenslanders have what it takes to become House Rules champions? Television's most inspiring home reveals. I shall be moving in. House Rules High Stakes starts next Sunday on 7. Happy birthday! Today, Dad got me a car for my 18th. Man, I miss him so much. Help your family's life go on. Even after yours, search Medibank Life Insurance today. I was a dancer all my life, but then when I did retire, I didn't have any super. To be on the pension, it was an enormous struggle, and it got to a point where I thought my house was going to be repossessed. It really worried me. When I found Home Safe, I realised that I could use the equity in my home to pay off my loan. It just cleared all that stress and that worry. HomeSafe, the unique alternative to a reverse mortgage for over 60s. Guys, dinner! I'm thinking, I need to... Yes! Nintendo Switch. Play. Connect. Stokva? Hell yeah! Stokva! Stokva. Icebreak. Bring it on. When immune health matters, support your immune system health with Restore Probiotic Daily Health. Restore Probiotic Daily Health is specially formulated to support immune system health and function, even when travelling. To maintain your general health and well-being, support your immune system health and function with Restore Probiotic Daily Health. For when immune health matters. Available in grocery and pharmacy. My way is nature's way.
The Nick Scarney Autumn Sale, extended for one week only. Prices have fallen on quality furniture, up to half price. The Nick Scarney Autumn Sale, must end this Sunday. There's a new way to curl hair that uses air, not extreme heat, to attract, wrap and set curls. Powered by the Dyson Digital Motor, with different heads for different styles. Dyson Air Wrap. What if you're missing information that could affect your child's future? Like important information about meningococcal disease. A rare but potentially deadly and devastating illness, most common in infants and adolescents. Missing information could mean missing out on a whole lot more. Speak to your doctor for more information on meningococcal disease and how you can help protect your family. Three, two, one. Take off. Take charge. Take it all. And then some. Show off. Nice rocket. Show the way. And then some. Be sure. Be adventurous. Just be that person. And then some. The X-Range. Fourteen hundred auctions were originally planned for today before the shutdown put an end to that. Instead, fewer than 350 homes went under the hammer online. But the good news is the clearance rate was 90%. This is the new reality for auctioneers in the era of social distancing. Against the phone at 490 now, at 490,000 once at 490. The crowds are out, so they're online to connect with bidders. All finished. Silence, out, at 500,000 instructions mills. Can we get 10 on top at 500,000? Harcourts in Epping had six online auctions today. In the absence of any further bidding here today, we look forward to negotiating with you at the vendor's reserve price. One was passed in, another sold well above reserve. The biggest difference for us is that there's the lack of atmosphere and interaction with the crowds. This Yarraville home was going to auction today, but instead it sold online on Thursday. Sold to you, Lee. Congratulations. And well. All things considered, uh, I think we did, the buyers did, the vendors did uh, all pretty well under the circumstances, under a lot of pressure. On this occasion, the online auction resulted in a sale, but many vendors are opting to sell their home privately or taking it off the market altogether until the economy and confidence improves. Estate agents are booking up private inspections, generally 10 or 20 minutes between each inspection. So we're back to the old days of real estate of one-on-one -on -one inspections. Louise Cheatley, 7 News. Most of Australia is trying to practice common sense, but caution was thrown out the window in Queensland today. The state stood firm in its decision to host local council elections, despite desperate pleas from the public to postpone the polls. While some braved the queues, many took to social media saying they'd rather cop a fine than put their health at risk. Australians returning from the United States will be some of the first affected by the new strict quarantine measures. COVID cases in the US are soaring, now beyond 100,000. An 11th hour dash. The time to go home. Stranded Australians race to board the flying kangaroos, last hop home from the United States. Come home and be closer to our family where it is safer. Fleeing a rising tide of infection as the US becomes the first country to reach 100,000 cases. We appreciate what needs to be done to to, uh, to, get, uh, to get clear of this and get on the other side of it. As those who could moved out, the military moved in. Navy ship Mercy on a Mercy mission, the world's largest medical vessel docking in Los Angeles, where it immediately became the city's largest hospital. Within days, it will host 1,000 non-COVID patients. The Mercy is one of two US Navy hospital ships being used to address the crisis. The president will tomorrow farewell 
farewell the comfort which will be docked off New York from next week. Seven News Today toured a Manhattan field hospital set up inside a convention centre in just days. I applaud you guys. They're already asking for four more like it. We kick coronavirus ass. His empty city now filled with light, music Fire! and applause. Gratitude for frontline staff and financial help finally on the way. We can't chicken out at this point. <laughs> the president signing into law the biggest stimulus package in U.S. history. But I wanted that to be a nice signature. Right? In Los Angeles, Amelia Brace, 7 News. Those surging numbers in the U.S. saw Wall Street take a dive before closing. The Dow ending more than 900 points or 4.1 per cent down, snapping a three-day winning streak on the market. But overall, the week saw one of the most dramatic rebounds in decades, rising 13 per cent by close of trade, despite that last-minute fall. The first patient has begun a new global solidarity trial. It's taking place in Norway and virus-ravaged Spain, with 45 countries uh, and counting signing on. The trial will compare four different drugs and drug combinations in the race to stop COVID-19. This is a historic trial which will dramatically cut the time needed to generate robust evidence about what drugs work. In the meantime, health officials are warning about taking unproven drugs to treat coronavirus. The pictures are pretty haunting. A lonely pope delivering a special blessing to an empty St Peter's Square in the rain. He urged Catholics around the world to ease their fears through faith, describing the coronavirus tempest, which he says has left us afraid and lost. The blessing is a ritual usually given at Easter and Christmas. The Wiggles are working on new songs to explain the health crisis to young children. The Australian group wants to help educate youngsters on why they can't visit their grandparents. They're the same Wiggles, just more spaced out. With an important message for boys and girls. Oh, why can't I go to Nana's place? Social distancing in reality for children means I can't go visit grandma, grandpa, I can't uh, go have a birthday party or bring my friends in for a party or for a play date. This generous man filmed in Adelaide handing out wads of $20 notes to people in the Centrelink queue. You want $20? There you go. Pass it on. You. You're a legend, man. Pensioner Joan Smulders was down to her last $16. Imagine her surprise finding $100 in an envelope left anonymously. When I opened it, um, I was just... I just burst into tears. I was just gobsmacked. Being a proud person and self-sufficient, it was really difficult. And um, even to accept this, when I know that there's other people out there in the community that need it. This gesture from a little boy to his mum, who lost her job. If we can all help each other, we can get through this, I think, and come out on the other side better. Staying home to save the world. Jessica Ridley, 7 News. Ahead, a message from Melbourne workers. They helped build this city and they're asking for support to stay in business. Plus, you'll never guess who's getting into the sanitizer business now. Bob Dylan's first song in eight years. And not afraid to make a political point. And how zoos are keeping children entertained through social media. With each announcement comes more confusion. No one is getting off this ship. Perfect breeding ground for COVID-19. That's why every night at 7 p.m., the latest answers all your critical questions. We drill down into the age groups. The leading experts. Completely incorrect advice. Have immunity for a protracted period of time. Breaking down what you need to know. Major breakthrough in the detection. Michael Usher and Melissa Doyle bring you the latest every night this week at 7. Little hot cross bun, me loved bun of mine. What are you singing? Well, you know, Christmas carols. Mm -hmm. Easter carols. Good point. Dashing through the dough. No. Baker's delight. Nice and simple. We're Victorians. We know fire. We know how devastating bushfires can be to our beautiful state. So we know you should check the fire danger rating every day. How well do you know fire? Authorised by the Victorian Government. It's the SUV that's ready for anything. 
with Mazda quality and safety, and now even better value. In petrol for city living, or diesel for what's beyond. New Mazda CX-8, future ready. When you connect to the MBN Access Network, you'll have a choice of different speed plans available. Evening, Kate. Hi, Brendan. And your provider can help select the right speed plan for you. You want to break limits, break the mold, and break free. But have you got the bones to do it? 73% of Australian women don't get enough calcium from their diet alone. Boost calcium absorption with Austelin Vitamin D, Australia's number one bone health brand. Have you got the bones to do it? Test yourself at dtest.com.au. If you're looking for a rewarding career in fashion or millinery, Kangan Institute is bound to get you there with relevant on-the-job training. Now offering free tape courses. Kangan Institute, bound to industry, bound to succeed. You want to move your home loan, but only if it's worth it. At Bank of Melbourne, we'll give you 4000 bucks when you refinance. Cha-ching! If you have the will, switch to the bank with the way. Bank of Melbourne. A 94-year-old woman is recovering in a Sydney hospital after a shocking random attack. A man grabbed the grandmother's walking frame, pushing her to the ground. Her hip was broken during the attack. Walking is uh, somebody bother her and push her from behind. I, I, I just can't grasp it. I just can't understand it. Police have praised a good Samaritan who tackled the attacker, holding him until police arrived. The building in industry wants to be classified as an essential service to avoid construction sites shutting down under Stage 3 restrictions. The crisis has led to rare agreement between employers and the union to save the jobs of more than a million workers. Usually so much on construction sites is about teamwork. But despite increasing community concerns, the industry insists it can impose social distancing. There are typically lots of workers who move around and with the proper awareness and monitoring uh, can socially distance appropriately. Strict new building site rules now stipulate two metre gaps between workers, staggered starting times and staggered breaks, break rooms constantly wiped down and cleaned, triggering rare agreement between the bosses and the construction union's most controversial leader. They absolutely should be adhering to those guidelines and if they can't, then they should be closed down. If we thought for a moment it was unsafe, we'd shut it down ourselves. I mean, we've paid millions of dollars in fines for shutting down sites over safety, so I mean, we wouldn't hesitate for a moment. The industry argues it must be excluded from any lockdown because it's essential. Here, construction on a hospital. Here, on a pharmaceutical warehouse. So these products are used not just obviously for the, these difficult times with the coronavirus, but also more broadly in the, in, the, in the market for all of the communities. And the construction industry is also essential economically. Around Australia, it's responsible for the employment of more than 1.1 million people. Just look at our city skylines. And if there's an industry shutdown, once again, agreement between bosses and the union. I think them queues that we see would, would be getting longer and longer. If our industry were to close, that would have a devastating and long-lasting effect on our economy. Nick McCallum, 7 News. A beer company is donating 20,000 litres of hand sanitizer to frontline medical staff. Carlton United is teaming up with hygiene company Ecolab to produce and deliver more than 40,000 bottles to health workers. We saw making hand sanitizer and donating it to hospitals, nurses and other medical staff as an important way that we could contribute to fighting this pandemic. Another 10,000 litres is being donated to people in need. Zoos are closed, but they're coming up with creative ways to keep the children entertained. Two zoos in New South Wales are inviting people to learn more about their favourite animals through social media. 
The birds are still chirping loudly, but things are much quieter here at Featherdale. Essential staff caring for the wildlife park's special residents, the only people now allowed inside. Unfortunately, due to those regulations and just public safety, we've now got our doors close to the public. Their sister zoo, Mogo, also shutting up shop for now. It only reopened a few weeks ago after zookeepers defended and saved its 200 animals when bushfires ravaged the state's south coast. But now, with some extra time on his hands, the zoo's head keeper wants to hear from you. Ask me stuff. <laughs> Inviting the public to pay the animals a visit via the virtual world and learn more about them via the hashtag AskAZooKeeper. Hey, you keep a chat. My questions are for you today. The penguins have ears. He's answering questions daily about the penguins who don't quite understand social distancing, Nuka, their cheeky crocodile, their wallabies and kangaroos, and their very popular, very cuddly koalas. People are asking about uh, individual koalas that they might have meant before and are they still okay? Well of course there's been heaps of questions about Archer. If you have a question for Zookeeper Chad about any of the animals here at Featherdale or the animals at Mogo Zoo, you can leave a post or comment on their Facebook page or better yet, send a video to their Instagram. Just reach out via those methods and yeah, get in contact. Amber Laidler, 7 News. It's a good idea. Bob Dylan has gifted fans with his first song in eight years. The 17 minute ballad titled Murder Most Foul retells the assassination of JFK, referencing cultural events and figures of the 60s and 70s. Us little children, you'll understand. The Beatles are coming, they're gonna hold your hand. The legendary songwriter gave a nod to the coronavirus crisis when he launched the song, saying, Stay safe, say observant. Sports next with Jackie Felgate and Jack. The players might have won the pay battle with the AFL, but are they winning the PR battle? That is a very good question, Mike. We'll hear from the major players next as the players defend their stance after striking a deal to keep them afloat. Plus, Gillan McLaughlin gives several vulnerable clubs reason to rest easy. Could this be the next Melbourne Cup champion? And John Longmire gives the Swans a rev up. There's only one problem. Sunday on 7. Life's all about overcoming hurdles. On or off the track. That's why when it comes to looking after my body, I believe in being body smart. Nature's own joints and muscle products help to relieve mild joint pain and support muscle function. Be body smart with Nature's Own. Available for a great price every day at Chemist Warehouse. Everybody. Get 60 months interest-free now at Harvey Norman and receive a bonus gift card. The more you spend using interest-free, the greater the value of the bonus gift card, up to $300. Get what you need now with great deals across a huge range of furniture and bedding. Get 60 months interest-free and receive a bonus gift card. The more you spend using interest-free, the greater the value of the bonus gift card, up to $300. Limited time only, now at Harvey Norman. Oh, bog day. It's parked. <laughs> We've got a... Parked! <clears throat> the powerful Amarok V6 Canyon, now with a 1.99% annual rate. You have just six days until the Lamborghini Early Bird deadline in the Royal Melbourne Hospital Home Lottery. Plus, your tickets stay in the drawers for more than 14,000 prizes, giving you a 1 in 15 chance to win. Don't miss out. Just six days remain. Learn the art of quilting with Peter Rabbit. Bring the world of Beatrix Potter into your home. Issue by issue, get everything you need to sew this classic Peter Rabbit quilt. See your skills grow as you sew a beautiful quilt to treasure forever. Peter Rabbit Quilt, Issue 1, out now.
Chris Hemsworth is a god. In an electrifying night, Thor, tonight on 7. And the cousin, what a year he's had. He had the world at his feet. The drugs have destroyed him. He's as much drugs as I could. I'll stuff things up royally. Going without your kids. Daddy. And this, watching them grow up, moving through the system. Are you a violent person? You know, I want there to be carnage. Blood will spill. This is confronting. Bang, bang. Some of it is inexcusable. Have you used drugs, yes or no? Well, I'm on the deck, she's all the gear. I told you that. Brown low to Garbo. Without the truck, yep. <laughs> Until you walk in our shoes, you don't really understand how hard it is. Where he wants his life to get to now is not going to be easy. Yeah, it's been a while. Hey, mate, My shoulders prick up and I, I get excited. It makes me happy. But I want to see him happy, happy. <laughs> I am one of the lucky people. Like trust in the higher power. And that's got to be enough for me and it should be enough for other people. It's time. And I think some good can come from it for everyone. Welcome back. AFL players would have been left out of pocket while the game stands still if some footy heavyweights have had their way. Tom Brown has the exclusive details. Tom, what can you tell us? Jack, a twist, if you like, into the last-minute uh, negotiations as far as the pay deal was concerned. If a fair pay deal couldn't be reached, the AFL, at least one club president, discussed the idea of standing players down as late in the piece as Friday morning. Obviously concerned the league is effectively borrowing money to pay some of these players. But Gil McLaughlin, I can tell you, and the Players Association were well down the road on a deal and pushed on despite these rumblings, reaching a deal that sources tell me, including a lead leading agent, is very fair, very equitable for the players. Something no play, no pay. Players boss Paul Marsh offering up this response, explaining players need to be ready. Really difficult time at the moment. Um, I, think it, I think our community benefits from AFL football being played and right at the moment no one knows if and when we're going to get back on but assuming we do, I'm sure the fans want our players to be ready to go. Marsh revealing he's chatted to Lee Matthews after the legend suggested he's lost respect for the current playing group. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard to win you know, in, in the current times, and we get it. Like People are absolutely hurting at the moment. Um, everyone's hurting. Um, the AFL players have taken their part of that as well. The Players Association has taken its cut. They won't receive funding for the rest of the year. Marsh confirming some players are looking for part-time jobs. A number of players have already started down that path. In some respects, they'll have some positive benefits too. Speaking on radio, Gil McLaughlin offered a guarantee of sorts to the 18 clubs. Will all 18 clubs survive what's going on at the moment? Uh, yeah, they, they will. I, get, I can commit you this. The, the football, both the community level and the AFL level, with 18 teams and 14 women's teams, we will be coming back on the park at some point. McLaughlin also confirming an emergency loan to save the clubs is close to being finalised, explaining any Victorian finals are likely to be played at Marvel, the MCG not available after October 10, and clubs will have to select draftees sight unseen. The NAB League unlikely to be played this year. Tom Brown, 7 News. Chris Waller may have found a Melbourne Cup winner after claiming his biggest victory of 2020. Four-year-old mayor, very elegant, powered away from a high-class field to win the $1.5 million Tancred Stakes. Could this be Chris Waller's ticket to Melbourne Cup glory? Oh, what a mighty performance by Very Elegant. A cheeky, cheeky peep by James McDonald and a well-earned pat down the neck. James McDonald producing a patient but perfect ride. Waller's 109th Group 1 victory has him dreaming of bigger things with Very Elegant this spring. I guess Caulfield Cup would be high on our radar and even a Melbourne Cup. So let's hope we get weighted as well as some of the other, other horses from around the world. Earlier, the Kiwi trainer got in some last-minute track work of his own as those arriving at Rose Hill were met with a sign of the times. Bars might be closed across Australia, but that wasn't an omen for Gay Waterhouse in the Vinery Stud Stakes. Shut the bar in front from Proverbial and Nudge. Shut the bar goes on to win the Vinery. Jockey Adam Hieronymus saluting for his first Group 1 win. Waterhouse and Adrian Bott with their third in as many weekends. To continue riding on for her and get my first Group 1 winner, it's a huge thrill. While in Bendigo, the Paddy Payne trained hell of a street, led the Golden Mile from start to finish. Andrew McCormack, 7 News.
The A-League has been rocked by revelations a Newcastle Jets player has tested positive to COVID-19. The Jets were in action on Monday when they took on Melbourne City less than 24 hours before the season was suspended. The unnamed player hasn't shown any symptoms and is in quarantine. Athletes and sport organisers across the globe are doing their bit to help during the coronavirus pandemic. Following multi-million dollar donations by Rafael Nadal and Roger Federer for their nations, Novak Djokovic pledged a donation of almost $1.8 million for medical equipment in Serbia. The seven UK-based Formula One teams have turned their high-tech headquarters into ventilator production factories. And it's not just the players who need to keep their skills sharp during the break. City coach John Longmire has had his pre-game speech sorted, although the feedback wasn't all that positive. We've got to make sure we chase and tackle, play really strong football from the first bounce. Now let's get out there and have a real crack. Come on, let's go, boys. Oh, God, I wouldn't want to be his kids, Mike. That is all for sport. Well, a similar reaction from my own son. Thanks, Jack. <laughs> Melina is next with the forecast, and Mel, we could see some wild weather coming up tomorrow. Well, Mike, storms with damaging winds, large hail and heavy rain are possible tomorrow. I'll have all those details next. There's nothing like the bond between a mum and her son. I would describe my mother's laugh like a screeching cat. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think of that. How do you repay a lifetime of love? Um, if mum. House Rules will give him the chance. It's the first time I can give back to my family um, for everything they've done for me in my life. And we're going to try as hard as we can. Yeah. Finish. Oh, wow. How done. Cool is that? I've never built a timber wall before. Oh, my God. She's done nearly half the wall already. And every day mum will discover the hero inside of her. I'm just your ordinary and plain Jane. I wouldn't call you ordinary. <laughs> House Rules. It is the most amazing opportunity. I just appreciate it so much. I'm going to definitely go back a different person and I'm so grateful for that. New House Rules, high stakes, only on 7. It's here, next Sunday at 7. How's that for serenity? Can care be better at home? Oh, it's sanctuary. Your home's a bit of a sanctuary. Yeah, for me, rehab at home, uh, it, it gave me a huge amount of flexibility to be able to do the things I wanted to do. It allowed me to unstress and be in the moment in your house in your own comfort zone, which was really good for me and my state of mind. Search Medibank at Home to see how we're creating better choices for our members. Spending time at home this winter? Beat the winter rush! Keep warm with an Australian-made ultimate wood heater or gas log fire at genuine wholesale prices. In stock now, ready to go. Delivery available, hurry! Ultimate, Dandenong, Epping and North Geelong. Are you confident you can cover your living costs in retirement? A Challenger Lifetime Annuity can complement your existing retirement income, giving you guaranteed income for life. Find out more at challenger.com.au. <gasps> Fancy a new flavour this refill? <gasps> Murray River Salted Caramel. New Tim Tam Crafted Collection. What more could you wish for? How much is the Clue again, Dad? $41,990. Bet you that bloke wishes he had one. Get Kluger two-wheel drive GX. Drive away from $41,990 plus $1,000 of genuine accessories. Oh, what a feeling. Toyota. When your functional digestive symptoms bring you down, choose Iberagast, the power of herbs in action. A unique combination of nine medicinal herbs scientifically combined to reinforce one another, Iberagast is clinically proven and works to relieve multiple digestive symptoms. Iberagast, herbal power that works. As the day breaks... We have new developments and facts in the coronavirus crisis. The news breaks on sunrise. Calls for global collaboration. It's where you'll know what's unfolding. We're expecting in coming days we'll go to the next stage. Breaking news now. When the questions that matter are asked... Shouldn't the Prime Minister step in? What's happening from those protecting us on the front line? Thank you to our healthcare heroes. The team Australia trusts. 
are on Sunrise. Hello again. We've had a warm and dry start to the weekend, but storms are expected tomorrow. The city reached 27.5 degrees today. That was following an overnight low of 15 degrees. And looking outside now in the city, it's currently sitting on 26 out there. It will be warm overnight. It won't drop below 19 degrees. It has been dry and warm and mostly sunny across the state today. Most of our temperatures were above average. There was some patchy high cloud about during the afternoon, and that was mainly over the eastern ranges and western districts. Winds have been moderate northerlies with afternoon sea breezes. It got to 32 in Warrnambool, 28 in Bendigo, 26 at Wodonga. On the satellite there's a cold front and an associated low pressure trough and that will enter western Victoria tomorrow afternoon. It'll reach our central districts at night. The front will dive away to the southeast of Victoria on Monday morning but the low pressure trough will linger near northeast Victoria during the day. So that means tomorrow will be warm and dry at first but then we'll see these scattered showers and thunderstorms extend from the west from the late morning. They'll make their way over to East Gippsland at night and looking ahead to Monday we'll have scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms again across central and eastern districts. They will contract over to the east and mostly clear during the evening. Around the nation for tomorrow, Brisbane a shower or two and 27, a shower or two clearing in Sydney, 25, Adelaide partly cloudy, 25 as well and Perth partly cloudy 24 degrees but in Victoria we're warm and dry at first but these scattered showers and thunderstorms move across from the west they'll reach central districts in the afternoon and east Gippsland later in the day we can expect some storm warnings tomorrow thunderstorms are likely and they will be severe in some areas particularly over central and northeastern Victoria they could bring damaging winds large hail and heavy rain otherwise it'll be mostly cloudy with moderate northerly winds ahead of a milder western northwesterly change which will gradually extend across from the west. 22 in Ballarat, 29 degrees in Shepparton, 30 degrees at Orbost. Closer in we are in for a humid day across the suburbs tomorrow. It'll be a dry start but showers are likely in the afternoon and evening. We could also see a thunderstorm and it may be severe with northerly winds up to 40 k's an hour. It'll get to 27 in Geelong, 25 at Essendon and 26 at Rosebud on the peninsula. Showers and storms are expected to develop in the city tomorrow. From a low of 19 we're heading for a top of 25 degrees. Then a possible shower on Monday, 21. Mostly sunny and 22 on Tuesday. Mostly sunny, 23 on Wednesday. A possible shower on Thursday, 22. A shower or two on Friday, 26. And a shower or two on Saturday as well, but dropping to 19 degrees. But dry to start, then showers and storms in the city tomorrow, Mike. Hopefully keep people indoors. Thanks, Mel. And that's 7 News. Don't forget our special local late edition coming up later tonight. But for now, from the team, have a great night.